So Beyonce and Jay Z's baby, you know, Blue, Ivy Carter. Uh, I mean, can I call her Blue? Why do celebrities name their kids the craziest thing? Apple blanket. Anyway, so Blue is not even a week old. She was born January 7th. By January 9th, her dad, Jay Z, had this song called Glory. This song, Glory, is featured with Blue. At the end of the song, Blue starts to cry. And now the song has hit number 74 on the Billboard charts, and she's the youngest girl who's ever been on the Billboard charts. Way to go. In the song, if you listen to it, Jay-Z talks about, oh, you were made in Paris, and that there was like a miscarriage. And now I'm thinking, maybe that's the reason why she didn't come out and tell everyone that she was pregnant. You know, when she did that performance and rubbed her belly. Because she had a miscarriage and she was scared, you know, didn't want to jinx it. I don't even know this, but LA has like these medicine, marijuana dispensaries or something like that. And Blue Ivy is now like a new marijuana. They said it's selling like crazy. I mean, obviously Beyonce and Jay-Z didn't agree to this. Shoot. If I owned one of them, I would have done the same thing. No one is suing, so I'm going to keep caking it up. Okay, by the way, Beyonce had a lot of things to clear up. If you saw my last video, uh, yeah, this is the correction. First of all, Beyonce did not have a C-section, honey. She did vaginal. The second thing, she did not, her and Jay-Z did not spend $1.3 million to take out the whole fourth floor. Jay-Z and Beyonce gave a six-figure amount. No one knows exactly how much, but we know it's at least $100,000 to Lenox Hills Hospital months before Blue was born. Lenox Hill staff is stating that no, Beyonce paid the bill amount for the executive suite where she delivered, which was $800 a night. And there was no special treatment. And they were trying to make it sound like, oh, you know, Lenox Hill Hospital treats everybody the same. And if you would like to get your baby born here, I guess you can. Beyonce and her mom is actually trying to do their part for a 2012 campaign. Presidential campaign, might it be specific. They have these t-shirts coming out. It's like $45. And it's to help to fundraise help President Obama's re-election campaign. So check that out. So Amber Rose single came out, Fame. I thought it was good. I mean, I I kind of picture her kind of like Rihanna. Remember when Rihanna first came out? You couldn't tell if she could like hit the high notes, hit the low notes. She's like right in between. But the actual song itself, to me, I thought it was good. Other people, I don't really think a lot of people liked it. But I think she's gorgeous and I think her song was great. Amber Rose went to Star Magazine. To talk about a completely different thing. They were supposed to talk about like the music and how she had like this stalker or something like that. But when she actually went to the interview, the person who was interviewing her was saying, Oh, well, why did you break up Kim and Reggie? Amber Rose was trying to set the record straight like, Uh-uh, boo-boo. I wasn't the one who wrecked that relationship. It was Kim who wrecked her relationship. And when she did that, mm -mm, Star went crazy. So that's why that was the headline. She actually states this in TMZ live interview. If you want, you can check it out on my website. And Nicole she had an interview with Amber Rose. And it, it really got to like her childhood and what really went on. Another interview that Amber Rose did was uh, Rap Fix Live. And she actually tears up. I mean... I don't think a lot of people really hear her side of the story. When what? her and Kanye broke up, Kanye had a record and was bad mouthing Amber. And when Amber actually got on the street, Kanye's fans threw stuff at her. Like, that's just not even cool. I get that people have opinions. Even if it's not Amber Rose or anyone else, that's really messed up when fans take it in their own hands to start being violent towards someone especially when you don't know the situation so not cool uh-uh shame on you for all those people who did that to her so everybody know that j-lo and mark anthony they split even though they just had twins and j-lo has her boo who's 24 and mark anthony has his boo 24 
But on January 14th, Mark Anthony and J-Lo was actually promoting this singing competition. It's in Spanish. And um, K Viva is called The Chosen. Photographed holding hands. So, okay, they can have a cordial relationship, which is cool. It also came out that J-Lo is paying her boo $10,000. I guess love does cost something. She gives Casper $10,000 a week. J-Lo saying he's, she's giving him a stipend because she hates like flipping out her credit card every time they go eating or when Christmas time comes. Casper basically has to ask her for money to buy her gift and the other people he want to get presents for. You can't get too bad at J-Lo because Casper was basically in her situation. And I mean, she's taking him underneath her wing. And under her pants too, but you know, they're both backup dancers and Casper is not used to like the whole five-star restaurants, luxury hotels, private jets, and J-Lo actually states this. Casper go-go dances at LA nightclubs for like 250 bucks. So he's not making that much money. I mean, how how much go-going is he doing? How's he gonna get J-Lo a good gift? Mark Anthony being upset, yeah, you can be upset, but at the same time, Mark Anthony has a supermodel. She can afford nice things without him. I think if I was in J Lo's situation, I would probably give it to him too because she knows exactly where he's coming from. That's all I gotta say about that. J Lo is not the only person who came from the Bronx and had like rags to riches story. Also, Evelyn from Basketball Wives, uh, Evelyn Lozada. I'm sorry if I'm not supposed to say her name right. Oh well. So Evelyn and Ocho Cinco, they really are still getting married. This was I think get married July this year and. She's saying about 150 people is going to be coming. I don't know if Jen is going to be part of it. I mean, Evelyn couldn't say too much, but according to YBF, Evelyn did state that when you guys do see season four, you're going to tell that they're not talking anymore. I mean, Evelyn and Ocho Cinco, they still seem very happily in love. Uh, Evelyn and I have great taste in men. We like them tall, dark, and handsome. Just like my boo. Hey, boo. I see. If you don't think my man is cute, oh well, I'm the one sleeping in bed with him at night and I think he is dropped dead gorgeous, honey. Moving on. And he, she had a radio interview with a Big Boy on Power 106. And she was, you know, talking about how she's making more shirts and she's making money, honey. And also that there's probably going to be a spinoff with Evelyn and Ocho Cinco. Now that I will want to see. Because between Evelyn and Ocho Cinco being as crazy as he is and her with her attitude. I mean, I think that's going to be a really good show. The one thing I didn't get a lot was, um, I want to know about the twins. Do you remember at the end, she was talking about how she was going to inject two boys in her because they both wanted boys. So, I don't know. I guess stay tuned, right? I appreciate you watching. Uh, to hear more of my two cents, subscribe now. You want me to shut up or talk more? Tell me in the comment box below. Follow me on Twitter at Tyrelease2Cents. Laters.